Hello, and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we check out a Netflix original film in the order of release. We are going out of order today for a very special bonus episode on the brand new Netflix original film from 2024, which is an animated musical adventure comedy film called Thelma the Unicorn. It's directed by Jared Hess and Lin Wang and stars the voices of Brittany Howard, Will Forte, Jermaine Clement, Eddie Patterson, Fred Armisen, Zach Alphanakis, John Hedder, and Shondrella Avery. I am Jesse. I'm your host. Thanks for joining me today for this uh, animated family children slash um, adaptation from a book that Netflix has put out. So if uh, you haven't quite seen this one yet, it's only sort of been out for the last 12 hours or so, give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because I'm going to talk about this film in a little bit of detail. So Thelma the Unicorn, we do start the show with our fast flicks where we do a quick little summary all about the film. This one is about a an animal, I guess, who's striving for success and fame based on talent This pony must decide to either fake it till she makes it or stay true to herself. This this has lots of good uh, values, meanings, messages for kids and families. Probably giving away a little bit uh, too early, too early on. But how did this one end up on Netflix? We like to look at the history of the film. Obviously, I sort of said before, this is based on the children's book series of the same name by Aaron Bladley, uh, the same author of Bad Guys, Pig the Pug, a whole bunch of kids' stories. He's Australian, so this does have an Australian connection to it. This, uh, this film was announced in June of 2019. Netflix said they acquired the film rights to the children's book after a bidding war, and they were starting to develop an animated musical adaptation of the story. It would be directed by Jared Hess, who also wrote the script with his wife, Jerusha, and Lin Wang with Blabley serving as an executive producer alongside Patrick Hughes. Pam Coates was announced to produce the film in April of 2023 and Micross Animation provided the animation. So they are a French studio who have worked on things like the, I think the Poor Patrol Mighty um, animated movie, etc. So done some full feature work themselves too. This one, um, it was released on Netflix on the 17th of May, 2024. It's already been put on that Reframe Stamp Award winner for a feature list for 2024. So they obviously had high expectations for this. Translations around the world. There's only one uh, sort of different translation to Thelma with Unicorn, and that's in Chinese, where it's called I Really Want to Become a Unicorn. <laughs> not, a, not a bad title, nice little title. Uh, as mentioned, it's only just come out, so there's not a lot of consensus from critics and audiences. On IMDb, it sits at a 6.6 out of 10 on only 106 ratings so far. On Rotten Tomatoes, nine critics have reviewed it so far. It sits at 67%, so that is just on the fresh side. And Letterboxd at this stage, only 274 people have logged it. So uh, no actual consensus there either. So I guess I'm gonna sort of uh, not have anything to base my my feelings on because I'm gonna tell you my early thoughts. And and they are like, I, when it started, I was really worried where this was going to go and that, that this was probably going to be a slog. But once the music kicked in, the characters ventured away from the farm setting, I was all in. It, it, it didn't um, matter, I guess, that it wasn't the best animation. Uh, it just has so much to say about being true to yourself, the music industry. And, and there's quite a lot in this for kids to... I'm hoping that it doesn't go over their heads and I'm hoping that they can learn from this. So positives from me on this one. Let's let's talk about the characters in this film. So Thelma is our main character. She is a big dreamer who's always wanted to make it big. Um, she's a pony. She wants to be in the music industry, but she's stuck doing this mundane work on a farm. I guess the positive for her is that she's got these great friends surrounding her. Uh, and, and this film is about her losing her way when that call of fame and fortune comes knocking um, and, and about staying true to herself. So her, those friends on the farm, we've got Otis and I, he's, he's Thelma's best friend. It seems like a bit of a nerd. He's into role-playing games. He's like created his own game called Dungeons and Wagons. But he always sticks by her side no matter what. So never gives up hope. That true friend, I think he's a donkey. I'm not sure with animals, um, but I think he's a donkey. And then the other band member or the third member of the band is Reggie. I think he's a llama or an alpaca. He's, he's like this stoner-like character almost, I guess, who's there for the slapstick humor and then, and um, to take away from that sensitive relationship between the other two, I guess. Uh, the other the other characters in this film, we've got Nikki, who's, um, I guess, the the image of the pop princess she's like a a whale um she you know she wants fame she doesn't want to lose it she'll do anything to stop anyone challenging her pop music throne i guess her sidekick is megan or her manager or whoever she is yeah well no she's not a manager i think she's like a um assistant because her man she's managed by vic as well uh megan will you know 
she she gets treated really poorly by Nikki, um, but Megan will do anything for her and, and even do some mean stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, really the villains in this kids' film, alongside Vic, who we'll talk about in a second, but they're not too bad villains, which is nice to see. You know, it's, there's not a lot of dark moments in this film. Um, and Vic, he's the, I guess, the main villain, but in doing that, he's a humorous villain. He's um, the representation, I guess, of everything that's wrong with managers and greedy people who want to make money off artists and almost haul them out. And he is just gross. <laughs> um, played by Jermaine Clement. Very, very humorous moments throughout the film from him, though. The last character I'll sort of touch on is uh, Danny Stallion. So Danny Stallion is um, this big horse who has gone viral from a um, doing like a TikTok sort of video, I guess. And he'll do anything for his fans and put on whatever persona he, he needs to because he's trying to get through medical school. So I guess that was a nice little story on that side too. So, you know, um, Thelma and him sort of become a power couple in the industry, I guess is the best way of putting it. The directors, uh, Jared Hess. So D Jared Hess, everyone would know Jared Hess from being the director of Napoleon Dynamite. Did the animated TV show as well. He also wrote the film Nacho Libre. Um, and then Lin Wang, the, the co-director, has directed an episode of Teen Titans Ghost, has worked in the animation side of things. And also um, 10 episodes of that animated show called Unikitty, which was based on um, that character that you would have seen in the Lego movie. So has had experience with um, a unicorn style animation before as well. Even if that Lego animation is completely different. Uh, let's talk about some scenes. What are some scenes that stood out? What are some things that I like? What didn't I like? Most of the stuff I like, I think there's lots of good stuff in this film. And I, I'll start off, I guess, with the music because the, the film in the opening scenes kicks off with well-known songs from um, the past. Like the song, like, Are You Gonna Go My Way? And Hold On, I'm Coming. And um, the conga song by Gloria Estefan before they get into the original songs, which I thought was a really good way of doing it. And and even those original songs, I thought they were all great. They're even like, and I'm probably gonna talk about most of them, but the first song where the crowd line up at the farm, that was good. And then, because that was with the band. And then the next song is Thelma Solo. That was good as well. Um, the pool boys, I've got to talk. The pool boys are these characters that hang out with Nikki, the, the whale. Um, they are hilarious, absolutely hilarious. I loved every moment of them. I think there was a line, it was like, if they stop dancing, they die. They, they were just so good. Um, Vic, the, the, the evil manager, he has this song uh, called The Three C's to Success. Really well done, really well animated. You know, the first part was about change. The second part was about cologne and how you smell. And then the third one was partnership. And there's like a line about, well, that doesn't start with C. And it's like, doesn't matter. So I thought that was quite funny too. Uh, Vic does take uh, Thelma and Danny to like the the recording studio and, and you know, just this big um, industrialized sort of place. that has got like a lyrics room and AI machine that generates hit songs an auto tune room. And, and it was just a really good sort of um, mock of the industry. And, and this leads into um, Thelma and Danny having this overproduced uh, rap song, I guess, that you know, has this stereotypical music video clip on a boat and all that. Like, I thought that was really well done that moment. Um, there's a moment where Danny and Thelma are doing a, a fan signing event and it's a good moment for Thelma to reconnect with her bandmates. They've replaced her um, with another singer. However, there's, you know, Danny's just there signing autographs and there's this little girl that comes up with her grandma's urn with the ashes inside and she's like, can you sign this? And he just uses his hoof and smashes it. I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was really funny. Uh, the last thing I liked, Thelma, there's a, there's a part at the end where she goes missing and uh, everyone's searching for her and, and you know, they, they have posters up and, and all that sort of stuff and people are out in the woods walking, searching and then they cut to Peggy. Um, I didn't even mention Peggy before, but they cut to Peggy who is this, um, this blind um, past uh, music producer, like a really well-known music producer or legendary music producer. And, and I guess she's important in this film because she recognizes Thelma's talent without knowing what she looks like and knows that Thelma needs to understand that looks don't matter too, which is a big part of this film. But just the, the quick cut of her out with her stick and her big black rim glasses looking for her, I thought that was really well done too. Uh, things I didn't like. The, the, I sort of touched on this a bit, I guess, already, but the whole start on the farm, it was a little bit of a letdown. I think, you know, the, especially the poo jokes. There's this, like, scene where um, Thelma's wheeling or carting some manure or some poo and she pulls it along and there's the horses on the other side of the fence that are mean to her and it's, like, kicking and there's pink eye jokes. I don't know, just, just I don't know. I guess you got to have those poo-poo jokes, but it didn't land for me. And the last part that didn't really land for, was the break into the festival at the end. So Thelma and the band are back together. They're breaking into the festival. They're running through corridors. They're taking out henchmen. It just didn't do anything for me. It was just like a part of a third act that, you know, sort of lost its way for a little bit. So that's where I'm at for that. 
Let's talk about the themes, the ideas, the motifs. There is so much in this film, really, that, you know, hopefully if a kid watching this film just takes one thing away from this, that's a real positive. So the, the idea that, and it's all about the industry, the music industry and things like that. So the idea of talent and talent being ignored because of looks, the way that people look and that idea of don't judge someone, you know, based on how they look or don't judge them, you know, the book by the cover. Uh, that idea about truth too, not trading truth for a lie and, and being true to yourself. And that idea too, through music, singing with your heart and and, and the truth too, because even if you're tired of being overlooked, you shouldn't give in on your own image. And and obviously fame plays a big part in this too. The, the traps of fame, the actual act of fame, social media not being what it's made out to be, the, the representation of oneself, the, the fakeness at times of it too, and that short-lived fame at times through viralness or the seedy side of the industry and, and people wanting to make money, that self-indulgence and gratification and, and that idea of digging up dirt to better yourself. There's, th these are all touched on quite well, I thought. Uh, there's, this is a nice part too, but that use of algorithms and, and artificial intelligence or AI over originality. And these are obviously issues with the pop industry. Um, friendships. Friendships are really important in this film too because real friends will stay by your side or always come back to you no matter what. And and two, you've got to, like if you do make mistakes, you've got to own those mistakes and make up for it and and chase your dreams. Uh, and <laughs> the last, I just had to put this in because there's a very, very explicit scene at the start where uh, Thelma is looking over the fence and the grass is greener the grass is always green on the other side of the fence literally so um you know be happy with yourself so lots of really nice things to take out of this film what else did i take away i think um the voice of thelma like great songs great singing i don't know i just I, the rest of it the the voice acting for me I, I'm, I'm not sure it didn't really land for me it felt a little bit off so I felt like maybe a bit too much um enthusiasm in the character's voice that it was like at times thelma was screaming at the audience um so that sort of you know the 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 lows and the highs sort of were off for me i guess um and i think the other good thing to take away and i sort of said this too only um you know there's no scary parts for little kids the only scares i guess are or the, the only scary thing is the real world um and and this is seen, seen through people and the world of social media and fame um yeah but yeah I, I, you know it's 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 really interesting sort of thing too I, I the other thing i want to talk about too i guess is is the representation in this um the we've got african americans we've got kids in wheelchairs who play a real big part people of all different sizes and intellect i think that was like really really good um so really happy with that Questions, ponderings, thoughts. Otis, at the, right at the end, and I don't know if it's set up for a sequel, the, the truck that um, drove past and sprayed Thelma with all the glitter and, and paint um, comes past again and sprays Otis with white paint and feathers, and he looks a bit like a Pegasus sort of thing. Like, does this happen in the books? I haven't read the books. I've read the Pick the Pug books. I've read the Bad Guy books. I haven't read the Thelma the Unicorn books. So knowing Otis's character, he's obviously, you'd think he's going to wash it all off straight away, but I'm intrigued. Intrigued if this is a setup for the sequel. Uh, I'm ready to wrap this up. We give the film... A rating out of five. This like this is well worth a watch. Um, I guess I've already touched on a lot of this, but even for the younger kids, like the, the, there's no scary bits. Um, the songs are great. The messages are good. It's all round good family entertainment. You can go into this knowing that your kids aren't going to be petrified or wanting to turn it off. So I think that's a really sell good selling point. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. Three out of five for me. Three out of five. Solid family entertainment. We we have socials. We have Facebook. We have uh, X, formerly known as Twitter and Instagram. I just wanted to ask, have you read the book? Like, I know Aaron Babley um, uses the the rhyming sort of prose, so I'm pretty sure that happens in the book as well. I'm keen to check it out, actually. It's a sh it'll be a short read, so, um, you know, does this uh, adaptation hold up to the, the values of uh, Thelma the Unicorn, the book as well? I'm intrigued. As always, thanks for coming along on this, uh, this journey. We're back on Monday, as always, with our regular episodes, back going through the chronological order of Netflix original films. We do have a back catalogue of 360-plus Netflix original films, so give us a listen if you can. Give us a like. Give us a, a subscribe, and uh, I'll see you Monday. Thanks for hanging out today.